G'day guys, we've got an applications of differentiation question here today where we've got point A with coordinates h, k lies on the line y equals 2x and they've given us a graph with y equals 2x on it and I suppose this is for us to do a little bit of working out or to visualise the problem. So to start with we have to explain clearly why k is equal to 2h. Now the key word in this question is explain explain it clearly. So although this is quite an easy question, um, you know, the explanations might elude a lot of students and cause them to lose marks. So the way that I'd explain this is I would say since um, h comma k lies on y is equal to 2x, so I'm just saying that hk is going to be on this line somewhere, which is told to us in the preamble of the question, you're also going to say when x is equal to h, so this is what they represent, and y is represented by k, all you're going to then go is when it is equal to that, um, and y is equal to 2x, you just can write then, comma, y is k, must be equal to 2h. Full stop. And that's all you'd have to write. But it's important that you say that since you've got a point that lies on this line, and we can substitute the values for x to h and y to k, we can then substitute k into 2h. So basically we're saying because this lies on this, we can substitute the h's for the x's and the k's for the y's. So not too complicated, but as I said before, the, uh, the way you word your answer is crucial in this case. So what is the next part of the question asking us to do? Find in terms of h, d, the distance between a and the point b with coordinates 2, 0. Okay, so I'm guessing that's why we've got this graph here. So 2, 0 is here. And this is the point b. And we have to find the distance between a, which I'll make a different colour. What have we got here? Let's just say a is here. So A has coordinates h, comma k. So we have to figure out the distance between these two points in terms of h. So thinking back, guys, to your um, sort of uh, junior high school days, you will hopefully be aware of this uh, distance formula, which looks like a lot like a uh, you know Pythagorean identity, where we have the distance between two points is equal to the square root of the x-coordinate of one of the points minus the x-coordinate of the other point, all squared, plus the y-coordinate of one of the points minus the y-coordinate of the other one of the points, squared. So, what we can do now is we can sub in, substitute in the values that we know. So, we can say that d is equal to the square root of x2. Let's call that this one here. This is going to be our number 2, and this one here is going to be our number 1. So, x2 is going to be equal to h. So, I'm going to say this is equal to the square root of h take x1, which is just 2, all squared, plus y2, which is k, or I could write 2h, because that's what we determined up here, subtract 0 squared. Cool. So we can simplify this a little bit. 
So we have the square root. H take 2 all squared. Hopefully you guys are well aware that, well, I have a lot of students that still manage to mark this up. H take 2 all squared is equivalent to this. And so if you do our first inside outside last here, you're going to get h squared take 4h plus 4. So we can put that under the bracket here. We can say this is h squared take 4h plus 4. And then here we've got 2h all squared because the 0 makes no difference. So this is just going to be 2h squared is 4h squared. And then I put all of that under a square root sign. And finally, combine our like terms, we have d is equal to the square root h squared plus 4h squared is, you guessed it, 5h squared minus 4h plus 4, all square rooted. Cool. So that's we found in terms of h, the distance between this point B and this point A here, which can move along this line. So A could go you know, up in this direction, or it could go down in this direction. Okay, so C. Let's just separate these out a little bit. So we have part C. Use calculus to find the coordinate of, of the point on y equals 2x that is closest to b. Okay, so what is the goal in part c? Well, we have to find the point in terms of h that minimizes d, or this value here. So, let's get cracking. To do this using calculus, they kind of give it away. What we need to do is we need to find the derivative of d. So we need to find d dash with respect to h. Now, hopefully you guys are aware that rather than putting a square root sign, the equivalent to this is I can write, put this in brackets and go 5h squared take 4h plus 4 all to the power of one half. So these two um, representations are equivalent. So this is easier for me to picture the derivative for, so I hope you don't mind me going with this one. So the derivative of this, we're going to use the chain rule. We take the half down the front, so we have one half. We leave the inside constant, 5h squared, take 4h plus 4. We lower the power by 1. So it's going to be negative 1 over 2. Then we multiply it by the derivative of the inside function, which is 10h minus 4. And we'll put that in a bracket to make it easier to separate. Cool. Now we have to simplify this, i.e. like get it into a usable form. Because that's a negative half power, it's going to go in the denominator with the 2. And I'm going to be left with 10h minus 4 divided by 2 times the square root of 5h squared minus 4h plus 4. Okay, now I hope you guys are aware that to find the derivative or why we find the derivative is to minimize d that's when this derivative equals zero. So it's when we have a turning point in our, deri in our function, i.e. there. So what we do is we're going to make this equal to zero. And hopefully you guys have some understanding of rational functions and how they work. So the only way this is going to be equal to zero is when the numerator is equal to zero. If the denominator equals zero, then the function doesn't make sense. So what we can do to simplify our algebra journey is we're going to say, well, this can be simplified down to 10h take 4 has to equal 
0. So what I'm going to do is I take 4 across the other side and I divide it by 10 and I get h is equal to 4 on 10 which is equal to 0 0.4. Great. So that's my h value. I can also find my k value because I know that uh, k is equal to 2h. So I can say therefore k is equal to 0 0.8. And finally, to ensure that this is a local minimum, I'm going to draw just a small um, gradient table, I think would be the best term for it. So I'm just going to go Cool, so what I have at the top is I have H and then I've got uh, D dash of H and I know when H is equal to 0 0.4 the derivative is 0 when H is equal to anything less than 0 0.4 so 0 0.4 coming in from the negative and, zero, and anything greater than 0 0.4 we have to figure out what these are going to be so with this table, what we're going to do is we're going to go, well, if H is anything less than 0 0.4, let's say 0 0.2. So I substitute that into my little function here. This is, the numerator is the only thing that really matters here, is I go, well, if 10 times 0 0.2 is 2, minus 4 is a negative number. So the derivative is going to be negative. Let's say a number that's greater than 0 0.4, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 10 is 5, take 4 is 1, so that's positive. So what that means is that our graph is negatively sloped. Negatively sloped, it then goes to 0, and then it is positively sloped, a minimum. So guys, what we can say for the answer for C, I've sort of run out of space here, is to find the coordinates, the point y equals 2x that is closest to b, I'm going to say that this is equal to, so a has the coordinates 0 0.4 or 4 on 10, comma, 8 on 10, which we can simplify to 2 on 5, 4 on 5. And that's our answer. So, what would I use as sort of an approach to this question if I saw this in an exam? Well, what's good and bad about this question is each part of it, A, B, and C, are completely different. A is more of a um, sort of an understanding of basic principles, basic concepts, and making sure that you can explain yourself logically. So you've got to set up a logical argument here with what the premise is, what you're um, then proposing and then what its implications are. For B, we need to know what the, uh, the method for calculating the distance between two points on a Cartesian plane. That is crucial that we know this formula here. If we didn't know that one, B would be a lot harder than what it was for us to do then. And for C, we have to understand how the chain rule works. So this piece here, we had chain rule. We have to understand how the chain rule works and also be able to like apply it on the fly. The hard part I think of C was under, like making sure that you can um, or you appreciate that the only way that this function can equal zero is when the top equals zero. Because if you don't, you're going to find that the algebra on this is really, really tricky and unnecessary for you to do. So you're going to spend a lot of time in an exam fluffing around with something that's not necessary. But you know, guys, all of this just takes practice. If you just keep on, like, you know, keep on keeping on, you'll find that you'll start to get better at these and, you know, functions or formulas like this one and uh, differentials like this one will start to come a little bit more naturally until, you know, you don't even think about them anymore. So I hope this video helped, guys. It's a bit uh, messy at the end, but we got there.
you know, if you can take something from this video, oh, you know, that makes me happy. But, you know, just keep practicing. If it did help, give it a like. Subscribe to my channel, guys. I put out new videos all the time. If you have any questions that you want to ask me regarding maths, just leave them in the comments section below. I'm always looking for new video ideas. But, you know, guys, like always, until next time, enjoy your maths, please.